This course deals with logic circuits and digital computers. We use the term digits since early computers were used for computations with discrete numeric elements called digits. The term logic is applied to circuits that operate on a set of just two elements with values true and false. So the general purpose computer is a digital system that can follow a stored sequence of instructions, also known as a program, that operates on data. General purpose digital computers can operate on a variety of information processing tasks. In particular, digital systems store, move, and process information that relates to the physical world and human world. Quantities in the physical world, example, weight, temperature, velocity, are often continuous. That means they can take on all different values in a range. In contrast, the human world uses discrete values such as currencies and words. Our digital systems need to be able to operate on both types of information. In computer systems, we use binary and discrete values. So what do we do with continuous values that originate from analog signals? Imagine that we have a range of continuous voltages from minus 0.1 to 1.1 1 .1 volts, which means that our voltage is actually analog. We need to transform these voltages so that they can be used in the computer. We typically do this by having ranges that correspond to high and low. In this figure, the high output ranges from 0.9 to 1.1 1 .1 and low output ranges from minus 0.1 to 1.1. 1 .1. The high input range allows for 0.6 to 1.1 1 .1 as high and minus 0.1 to 0.4 to be recognized as low. In the figure on the top, we see the waveform of the voltages plotted against time. We can transform this voltage by converting all voltages above 0.5 to 1 and all voltages below 0.5 to 0. This transformation results in the waveform we see at the graph on the bottom. Since 0 and 1 are associated with the binary number system, they are the preferred names for the signal ranges. The binary digit is called a bit, and we represent information in the digital computer by groups of bits. These can be made to represent numbers and symbols through various encoding and decoding techniques. They can even represent instructions and addresses. We use binary since it's easy to distinguish between low and high even if we have noise. Binary circuits are simpler and more reliable than their multivariate counterparts. This is a simple block diagram of a digital computer. Memory stores programs as well as input and output. The data path is known as the arithmetic logic unit in classic von Neumann architecture and performs the data processing applications. The control unit supervises the flow of information between the various units, retrieves instructions, and executes them. When the control unit is combined with the ALU, we have the CPU. Finally, input and output devices allow the computer to interact with users in the outside world. Modern processors are actually quite complex and contain four functional modules, CPU, the FPU, the MMU, and the internal cache. We've already discussed the CPU as a combination of the control unit and the arithmetic logic unit. The FPU's floating point unit is responsible for floating point operations. Caches are special types of memory that allow data to be processed faster and with RAM alone. The MMU is memory management unit and assists with transferring memory. Uh, buses provide connections between units and the rest of the computer is made up of I.O. Digital computers such as your home PC or laptop are not the end of the story. In fact, microcontrollers and embedded systems are far more prevalent in today's world, even if their presence is not always apparent. One important area where embedded systems differ is that their software products are often permanently stored or embedded inside the product. They also have very limited human-computer interfaces. As a simple exercise, take a look around your home and see how many embedded systems you can find. I was able to locate my generic Roomba named Debop, but I bet you can find more. Consider a wireless weather station that measures the number of weather parameters of an outdoor site and transmits them for display at an indoor base station. The complete system has two embedded microprocessors, one in the outdoor site and one in the base station. In part A of this figure, we see the temperature at the outdoor site can range from minus 40 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. We measure this temperature with the thermistor and we have plotted the results on a graph. The temperature with the thermistor was measured using analog voltage, but we'd like to convert it to digital for use back at the base station. We sampled the temperature once per hour and used an analog to digital converter to replace the measured value with digital numbers and binary. Here we have just four bits, so we've lost a great amount of precision and can only have 16 different temperatures. Digital values pass through the microcomputer to a wireless transmitter as an output device and are transmitted wirelessly to the base station receiver, which acts as a digital input device. From there, the base station microcomputer performs calculations to adjust the digital values based on the thermistor properties and displays the results on an analog meter that you see at the bottom. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check LaLuma for assignments, readings, and more.